This time last year, all I was thinking about was posterior chain. I specifically remember last year writing a whole page about how my plan was to hit the posterior chain. And the hope was that I was going to address this sticking point weakness that I had in the squat, meaning that the distinction that I had in my mind from what I learned uh, from Chad Wesley Smith from Juggernaut uh, Training Systems, he basically precipitated the issue to two different things. Either you fall in one basket or the next. The first basket was basically you have weak legs and you squat and when you hit a sticking point uh, that your quads cannot overcome, you basically fail. So these squatters, you don't see grind at all. Then you have the other basket, which are the lifters who have really strong backs and weak legs. And so these guys, they will hit the sticking point and they can fight seemingly for like a long, long period of time. They can just continue fighting and grind this thing out because the squat, as they start grinding, starts to transform into a deadlift-like pattern and they get the lift. So for me, historically, based on that type of thought process, I could never grind. You know, I would bounce out of the hole, get to the sticking point. I would have like a split second decision to make whether I die under the bar or I bail. I never had the ability to grind. And so yeah, so, so last year, I was like, okay, I don't have the ability to grind. Let's hit the posterior chain. And I hit the posterior chain with all my mind. I talked about RDLs, blah, 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 all that stuff. And I deadlifted more weight last year. Uh, you know, and I, and I had a pretty good time with that, but it didn't translate to a more upright squat. No matter what I did, it didn't. Until last year, I started flirting around with Hindu squats. Hindu squats was something that miraculously transformed my front squat by 20 kilos. You know, I went from 160 to 180 front squat. That is extraordinary. This time around, I've started the year of purely quads. Okay, let's take this squat idea and take it as hard as I took last year's posterior chain. My hope is that not only is my squat going to improve, but it's going to improve technically as well. So I'll be more upright, I'll be more in my quads. And let's see whether I completely lose the ability to grind altogether at all. Like even if I had like a millimeter of grinding ability, maybe I'll lose that as well. So I don't know whether Chad Wesley Smith was correct when he was talking about that. I'm sure it helps some lifters. But maybe in my books, my assessment using that methodology was wrong. Maybe it was my weak legs, not my weak back. And when you think about how I squat, when you think about how I deadlift and how far my deadlift is ahead of my squat, maybe it's my quads that I like. Essentially, if you take all of the lifts that you have and you write them down, you should be able to form an opinion on what you are strong at. So, you got the squat, what do you squat? You got the deadlift, what do you deadlift? Uh, what can you RDL? What can you block pull? What can you deficit pull? After, you know, a few of these lifts put together, you should be able to map out which muscles are lagging. So if I think about that, for me, it has to be the quads. I'm weak off the floor in the deadlift. I never have any problems locking out a deadlift. So my, my, my posterior chain is really strong because, you know, what do they talk about when they say you can't lock out a deadlift? You, your, your glutes are weak. Your hamstrings are weak. You just can't stick your hips through. Never had that problem. My problem was on the floor. Always on the floor. In fact, that floor position is awfully similar like to the sticking point in the squat. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Quad, quad. What, what, what used to trouble me the most was doing fully vertical Hindu squats. Just have no power there. So simply doing body weight Hindu squats was more than enough. I would do a set of 30 and I would be lit up. Lit up. That is a glaring weakness. I'm doing body weight squats here, wide stance, trying to emphasize the quads. I get lit up. I can't get, you know, a set of 50 with body weight squats. Obviously, different energy systems. I understand all of that. You're not, you're not trained to do high repetitions. I get all of that. But there is a glaring weakness here. Despite the energy system that you're using, this, the, the, this, despite the rep range is using, there is a glaring weakness here. Um, and already I'm seeing the benefits.
I'm more upright. I feel like there is something to be used in my quads. I feel like there's more confidence. This mind-muscle connection that I'm creating with these bodyweight squats are allowing me to neurologically lock into these quads. So instead of the other way around where we are trying to cue, you know, mentally connect to the muscle, how about we get the muscle so pumped up, we get the muscle so hypertrophied that the mind has no other, no, no other choice but to look at the elephant in the room. If you've got humongous freaking quads, do you really think the body is not going to use them? Remember, the body is continuously looking to find the path of least resistance. This is inbuilt into us, into our brains, into our organisms. When, we, when you are faced with a, with a, with a situation, with a, with a scenario, the fight or flight mode is basically how do I get myself out of here? Or how do I end this threat immediately? The body in that moment, when you're lifting one rep max or you're fighting that life or death situation, it doesn't think to themselves, like the body doesn't think, okay, how do I get the most reps out of this? No, man, just get the hell out of here, man, end this. And this is what happens with us when we are approaching max, max weight. Okay, here is a max weight on our back. How do I get out of this situation? The body has all these receptors around the body. It knows what it needs to tap into to get out of there. And if you've got humongous squats, what do we know about quads? When do you use squats? When you stay upright. When you stay upright, you use most squats. When that knee angle, you know, when that knee gets over the toe. So a lot of people, a lot of people think, okay, I need to work on my ankles. I need to unlock my ankles to use the quads. What if the body is protecting, protecting itself by locking down the ankle to prevent you tapping into that weak quad. What if, let's entertain that idea, the body is purposefully locking down a department of your body because it knows it cannot tolerate stress. So what if we beef up that department, we put slabs of muscle, we put slabs of strength into that quad through accessory movements, through accessory lifts, what happens to the ankle mobility then in a fight or flight situation, in a one rep max situation? Do you really think the body's going to be like, no, 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 let's lock down the department, which is going to save our life? Hell no. We are neurological creatures. We are always looking to survive. So I reckon your ankle dorsiflexion improves if you put on humongous quads. That's my logic serving me. I really think that's the case. There's no other reason why the body would be locking down the ankle. It's, a, I get it, it's a situation of what comes first, chicken or the egg. I get it, I get it. But what I'm saying to you is, use accessory movements to beef up the quads, and then the body's going to want to go into the department like that when we are in trouble. You can't think to yourself, okay, let's use more quads. Let's put the slam board on. Let's do all these other things to use, really use the quads. Really emphasize the quads. And, and lift 80%. You are literally trying to deactivate the safety mechanisms of your body. Strengthen that guy first. Strengthen it first. Then you'll see even flat-footed squatting improve. Because the body, the, the receptors, the fascia, which is very, very dependent upon the nervous system, is going to start to release and get you into the, those departments which are now strong. That's the whole thing, man. If you, like me, and all you want to do is, is, is lean over when you squat, the moment it gets heavy, you bend over and you try to get the posterior chain involved. What are we really, what's really happening there? The weight's really heavy and we're trying to get in the most advantageous position for ourselves to survive this. It's a posterior chain for us. It makes no sense why your body would go to a posterior chain lift pattern if it wasn't its strongest point. Makes sense to me, man. Anyway, guys. Appreciate all of you guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.